With no deficit uh, panel deal in sight, the Super Committee is trying to squash concerns that uh, maybe quash that no deal will be reached. Joining us now, Representative Jim Himes and Representative Dave Schweiker, both members of the Financial Services Committee. Good morning to you both. It's great uh, to, to have you on. Um, morning. morning. Uh, Congressman Himes, you, you said it. You were early. I don't know. You've got like a, uh, a wiretap somewhere, but you were early with, with the idea that we shouldn't just uh, assume that it's just going to be 1.3 trillion. You said you were hopeful about that, but maybe it was still possible. And lately, I've read some things that the the leadership of both parties at least wants to pretend that they're interested in something like that. Is it really possible? It seems too good to be true. Yeah, I, I continue to think it's possible. I just think now we're really running into a timing issue. I mean, you know, we are gradually overcoming. Uh, the insistence on the Republican side that there be no additional revenues from the very wealthiest people in this country. You know, we saw 40 of them sign on to a letter which said revenues had to be on the table. You know, at some point, though, you just, you know, it's going to be challenging. I continue to be optimistic on this process, but it's going to be challenging to reform the tax code and to do the hard work of fairly reforming uh, Medicare in a two-week period. I mean, uh, we're, we're really running up against the clock at this point. In a, in a perfect world, though, Congressman, if if you know that, that both cutting spending and raising taxes are both negatives for the economy, and you know that spending is a problem, I mean, if you're going to pick one or the other, wouldn't you pick spending first? Well, you know, this isn't that hard an equation, even though an awful lot of political people would have you believe that it is. Look, in the very near term, we know we need to be very careful about the cuts we make or the taxes we raise. Both of those things are destimulative. One of the biggest contributors in the last year or two unemployment has been the firing of hundreds of thousands of public employees and teachers and that sort of thing. So it's just not that hard. In the very near term, when we're in, at, at best a very hesitant recovery, you go pretty light on those things that you know could damage that recovery. But but you put in place a plan with real, uh, you know, real compulsion to abide by that plan in years two, three, four through ten to make significant uh, cuts and significant changes to revenue so that you balance this thing over a ten-year period. Congressman Schweiger, we do keep hearing that to get a grand bargain, both sides have to have to give something. So, uh, is it true, maybe that that even if you got ten to one, if there's any revenue increases, even ten to one, ending, uh, to one revenue increase, even that's not good enough. It, it almost that, that's yeah. what the other side is going to say is is. It, uh, it, it matters, but but it's like the devils in the details. It matters what is designed. If it's actually, which one of my great hopes is, is there's a substantial look at how the tax code is designed. If you're going to go through and remove some of the lobbyist created carve outs that may actually favor you know one side of the income um, level fine that that's a worthy debate that actually might make some sense but you also have you know this vision of as my friend from Connecticut was just talking about you know cutting certain types of government jobs and is that um, a, you know hurt current stimulus well but on the flip side how do you tell the world markets how do you tell the local markets that we're dead serious on dealing with this debt explosion? And the reality of it is our crisis is actually on the entitlement side of the ledger. Congressman, hi. Well, I, I, uh, I think you tell the market that we're serious by putting together a plan that is balanced and good. Personally, as a representative of the American people, I'm a little more concerned about the 15 to 25 million people who are out of work today, right now, and perhaps secondarily concerned with what the markets think about how rapidly we're moving on a plan. Both are yeah, important. And, and that's wonderful rhetoric, except for the problem is it doesn't work in the math. How do you get that 15, 20 million jobs in an environment where the capital formation is terrified that we're heading to being another Greece, even though that may be a decade away. Well, um, well I, I, you, I don't, you, you I don't actually disagree. Have to, no, you have to step up. And look, and, and to our friends watching Squawk Box, actually, Mr. Hines and I are actually friends. We've recently done bills on the floor of the House for capital formation. Uh-oh, something bad is coming. Yeah, I know. Right here. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But... <laughs> but, but you, you are actually looking at a couple different windows. What do you do right now, legislatively, whether it be regulatory or capital formation that's stimulative, and then communicate that we're, we are going to have to step up and deal with this monstrous entitlement wave that will crush us. But Representative you know, Himes, do you disagree that there is a connection between capital formation and perceived risk about the future of the United States? I mean, you don't think that people hold back money for fear of the debt path that we're on? 
Look, Congressman Schweikert and I don't disagree on, on how we handle the tax code. I also agree that That's we ought to I take asked. out the incredible uh, number of deductions and credits that result in a trillion, you know, in tax code. That's not what I asked either. We, we fundamentally agree on that. But, you know, he knows as well as I do that capital formation in an environment of zero real interest rates and in equity markets over $12,000, capital formation, and by the way, the regulation thing is just total baloney. The prime problem we have in this economy today is aggregate demand. And aggregate demand is held down by a housing crisis and by the fact that you've got 15 to 25 million people out there who are not employed or underemployed. You That's can't fix egg, the long-run capital pro the formation problem without putting Americans back to work. Yeah, and, and the fact of the matter is the comment you just heard about regulation is absurd. Come visit my employers here in Arizona when they talk about, you know, EPA, the new health care law, fears of things the NLRB are doing and why they're holding back the hiring that next person. The fact of the matter is the regulatory environment out there and the unknown elements within Dodd-Frank are crushing a lot of our economic growth. Well, Congressman Schweikert, the, uh, the Clean Air Act and the Clean Water Act, which your party has worked so hard to dismantle in the last two months in the Congress, has been around since the 1970s. If you want to make an argument that we should eliminate all the protections around Dodd-Frank, you, you make see, that argument, great, but the reality, that's great but the reality political is, is rhetoric. not about regulation. Congressman, that's great political rhetoric, but doesn't have anything to do with reality. And once again, we, we see the cleft say, you know, say, oh, this is a nice highbrow um, rhetoric, but it doesn't have anything to do with the reality of the types of job formation bills and, and trying to do some rational um, control on well, well, these regulations okay, that we've been pushing left. How the about Mr. Bartlett, who is Ronald Reagan's advisor, who said the premise that the key impediment to our economic recovery today is regulation was, and I quote Mr. Bartlett of Ronald Reagan's administration, <laughs> just made up. So you have to find someone from, you what, 25 years ago to hold Here's, up your yeah. quote Here's instead of our local <laughs> employers who are telling you it every uh, single day? Come day. on. I, I, yeah, yeah. And I just think back to the good old 70s. I just don't remember carbon dioxide was a pollutant back then. You know, the things that all the plants sort of breathe in to do photosynthesis. I don't remember well, well, when how that about, was. How about in our world dealing with Dodd-Frank? <laughs> yeah, all right. Anyway, gentlemen, we, we appreciate it. Uh, always a pleasure.